Hey people, welcome to my channel, which takes you on a mapping and data wrangling journey through R. My name is Milos and I'm a creator of original maps, which I regularly post on Instagram and Twitter. I'm back with another tutorial and this time we're going to create railway maps. Who doesn't like trains, right? I love trains and I like creating train maps and I created a bunch of railway maps in the past. But recently I discovered Open Railway Map, which maps uh, railroads across the globe using OpenStreetMap data. And I was thinking to myself, how cool it would be if we could create a railway map on any country in the world in R. So here I am with another tutorial where we will exactly do this. So first I will show you how you can easily download OpenStreetMap data for any country in the world. Then we will do some data wrangling. And finally, we will create the country railway map. So without any further ado, let's roll. OpenStreetMap data is one of the largest geospatial databases in the world. It is based on collaboration with local mappers, who uh, include points of interest, roads, or railways, buildings to it. And in one of the previous tutorials, we used OpenStreetMap data to get uh, roads for our cities. But in this tutorial, we're going to go one level up and work with country level data. Now, because this is quite a big project, it's hosted on several servers around the world, and one of them hosts continent and country level data which we need. It's called Geofabric and we are currently at the Geofabric website where you can see the list of continents that uh, this data set hosts. Now these are links which means if you click on any of the names of the continents you will get then a different country level data except maybe for Antarctica. Uh, and also you can see here the uh, three different uh, file types that you can download. For our purposes, we will use the middle one, which is the shape file, and it's in a zip format. In this tutorial, we will be mapping the railway network of European countries. So let's expand the Europe folder in the OSM uh, website by clicking on it. A new window opens up and we get yet another list this time of available European countries and their associated shapefiles. Now, on this list, you will notice two types of countries. One type of country are those that have a direct link to the shapefile.zip and then some countries that don't have. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can use R to fetch data for both types of countries. Now, now the first type of countries is quite straightforward. What you simply need to do is you need to hover over the link and then just simply click right and then copy link address. That, that's it. We will then use that in R to uh, download the data, unzip it and then load it into R. Now for some countries, like for example, uh, Netherlands or um, Russian Federation or Spain, you need to actually expand further. So, for example, Spain, if we click on Spain, another window opens up. And here you can finally see that there are uh, Spanish regions for which there are shape files. So, this is a bit trickier because here we need to loop through this specific web page for Spain and then we need to scrape all of these links from this page and then tell R to download the data from these links. So in our next part, we will see how we can easily do that. And then you can actually download the data for other countries with similar pattern, or you can also download data for continents, which include the list of countries. Before we dive into R, the only thing we need from this website after getting all this information is the web link from which we need to scrape all other data links. So if we go back to the Europe level, we will see a general pattern. So there is download.geofabric.de, that's the main one. 
And then if you enter Europe, it's going to be slash Europe dot HTML. If you, however, then select, for example, Spain, as we did, then next to Europe, this is going to be slash Spain dot HTML. So for now, I think what we're going to do is we're going to simply just take this link for Europe and then we're going to scrape those links from that one. And then we're going to take for some countries where only single file is needed. And then we'll go to the more complicated example of Spain. Back in R, we use several necessary packages, nothing fancy though. One of them is the Tidyverse umbrella package, which will help us with data wrangling and uh, visualization. As a package, we'll use to load uh, shapefiles into R. Gisco R, uh, we'll use to fetch national boundaries and HTTR and XML for web scraping. Since we will be creating a map of Czechian railways and Spanish railways, we're going to first create two directories, one for each. So I will show you how to do that in an easy way. First of all, we define our main path. Uh, in my case, this is the main path that I'm going to be using. Then we set the working directory to this path. Then, well, next thing, we will create a directory. Uh, in our case, that first one is going to be the Spain OSM directory, where we will put the Spanish railways and the Spanish file. Uh, and then what we do next is we create this directory, uh, which is uh, named Spain OSM in this main pathway. And finally, we create a new pathway where we append this Spain directory to it. Uh, we create also a checky underscore OSM directory where we will store this. It's the same process as we did for uh, the Spanish one. But here uh, at the end of it, uh, as you can see, we created checky OSM pathway uh, as well as directory appended to it. We also define this as our new directory because this is going to be our first method of downloading file. We'll start off with the first method, which is downloading a single country file from the OSM website. The easiest way to do that is to uh, define the URL you need uh, and then provide that to R and tell R to download the file to your local drive. So remember, we already set a working directory, which is checky underscore SM. This is where we're going to download. Now, in terms of defining the URL itself, we simply copy it from the GeoFabric website. You can also do that as well. This is the third column where they define links to, to shapefiles. And after that, you simply provide this URL to R and you start downloading. It's going to take a while, uh, especially have a slower internet because this one is 1.2 GBs uh, large. So we downloaded the single zip file for the Czechia. It's on our local drive. It's in the directory that we defined. And next, I want to show you just how many beautiful geospatial files are here and what actually is out there in this zip file. So that zip file that we just downloaded, I inspected its contents and boy, it has 18 different files there, 18 different geospatial objects. So ranging from buildings to land use, places, points of interest, roads, traffic, transport, waterways, and most importantly for us, railways. So in this tutorial, we will just use railways. So there is no need to unzip all these files. And I'm going to show you a trick how you can, with R, only unzip this single file and then load it as a shape file into R. And here I'm going to show you the trick how you can just grab one zip folder and then unzip it rather than unzipping everything that exists there. So we first are going to define our zip file. Uh, by taking the list of files that exist there, which is just going to take that one checky as it uh, folder. And then in the next one, we're just going to grab uh, those folders that include our railways in them using the unzip function where we enlist everything that is inside, but we're not going to unzip yet here. Then in the third step, we are going to use the zip file that we want to unzip. And then for files, we're going to define those that have zip name in it. In other words, those that include our railways. And finally, we're going to use our Czechia directory and just uh, 
unzip there. Finally, we inspect what we have. And as you can see here, apart from this main zip folder, we only unzipped a railway uh, shape files. And then we simply grab that new file name and using the stread function from the SF package, we finally load the check railways into R. Then we also inspect uh, this new object that we just created uh, and uh, we find that it has uh, 10 fields. Most importantly, it has the geometry field, which denotes uh, line strings. Uh, but for us, uh, one of the most important ones is actually the third column, which is F class, which denotes different types of uh, rape classes that exist in the OSM dictionary. Uh, there are different ones here, but uh, the most important thing is if you go to the OpenStreetMap wiki page, you will find that uh, there are here uh, different definitions of rails and uh, they mean different things, of course. But uh, for us, in this one, we simply want those rails that are either passenger or freight rails, so that are not really necessarily limited to uh, the cities. And uh, for that purpose, we are going to use two types of uh, railways here, the ones that are just uh, denoted rails. These are full-size passenger or freight trains uh, using the standard gauge. And we're also going to use uh, narrow gauge, which are again passenger or freight trains, but again with a, with a narrow one. Everything else is either a special type of train or those that are just limited to the city areas. Before venturing forth, let's just check if we actually downloaded the Czechia railways. And the best way to do that is to plot our railways object against the national boundaries of Czechia. So using Gisco R's Gisco gets countries function, we will fetch uh, Czechia, which is CZ uh, ISO2 code. And after that, we will simply use ggplot2. We'll have two layers. The first one will be this uh, Czechia SF, which are the Czech national boundaries. They're gonna be in light blue. Uh, transparent, of course, so that we can see railways inside of it. And the other one will be uh, the newly created railway files. But here, as we said before, we will only take rail and narrow gauge. And for that, we will uh, pick those up from the F class column. And the railways will be in pink. So here it is the railway map of Czechia against the Czech national boundaries. Seems all right. It's a very dense railway network. It's actually among the five densest in Europe, so that's why you see actually a lot of lines on this map. Next thing, I'm going to show you the second method that you can use to extract OSM data in the case when a country is composed of several regional files. In this part, I will show you how you can download multiple files for a single country from the OSM website. To do that, let's first check out our Spain OSM directory. Then let's define the URL to this Spain web page. And then we will make an HTTP request inside of this function using the HTTR get function. Then we will parse the data to the HTML format so that we get different nodes. And then we will scrape all the href tags where these links are located. And finally, we will store all these links into a list and inspect them. So we scrape 152 links from the websites and we know that there are not that many Spanish regions. So it appears that we also scrape some unnecessary links. If you remember previously the link to the Czechia files, it did include latest free .shp.zip, and then before that was the name of the country. What we're looking here is exactly that, but this time instead of the name of the country, it needs to be the name of the region. So we just eyeball this list. We see 139 here results, which um, has exactly that same pattern. So even the link reminds of that. The only thing here that is a bit concerning is there is some kind of a disconnect. What we should have is after this generic main geofabric link slash Europe slash Spain, then we have this dot HTML Spain and then slash and it goes the name of the file. So 
we need to actually get rid of this one. Uh, it repeats over and over. For example, if you go to 139 for Mercia, you will see exactly the same problem here. So if we just get rid of this .html Spain, we should be able then to have a proper link from which we can download the regional shape files. So we go about that. First of all, we take this old links. Then we select this pattern uh, that every file has, which is latest free.shp.zip. And then what we say is just remove this string.html Spain from each of them. And then once we inspect that, we get finally 18 links for the 18 regions. And this, this time it looks that they are proper, but we will check that in the next step. We'll, we will try to use a for loop to download them. So we use those uh, Spain links, we put them into a for loop, and as you can see, we start downloading these original files one by one. So this is gonna take a bit longer. The file size is around similar size to the, the Czechia file. So it's gonna take a few more minutes, uh, depending of course on your internet speed. We successfully downloaded all those uh, zip folders and then when we inspect the files, we get exactly the 18 list of files, which corresponds to 18 Spanish regions. Now it comes a more trickier part, which is unzipping these files without overwriting them. Why am I saying this? Well, if you notice when we unzip the Czechia file, the name for the regular file was pretty generic. It didn't have any name for Czechia setting it apart from, let's say, other countries. You would get the same if you unzipped any of these folders, regional folders for Spain. And that is the problem, because we want to unzip each and one of them and then put them together. But if we unzip, let's say we start with Andalusia and then we move on to Aragon, what will happen is that Aragon will overwrite Andalusia and every next one that we unzip is going to uh, overwrite the previous one, especially if you use the for loop. Now, how do we solve this? The way we go about this issue is the following. We will first grab all those zip folders which have railways in their name. But then, instead of unzipping every single file, we will uh, then put those that we unzip into a separate folder that we previously created. And then in that folder, we're just gonna rename by appending some random uh, number to each and every file. And this will then prevent uh, this overwriting at every single step. In practice, this is how we're gonna go about this issue. First of all, we're gonna navigate back to the parent directory. Over there, we're gonna create a new folder, Spain Clone OSM. This is where we're gonna store all these unzipped files and avoid overwriting them. We will also create a pathway, which is Spain cloned there out. It's gonna be pathway to this new folder. Second, we will create zip files, which will contain all those regional files that we downloaded. And then we're gonna create a for loop where we do the entire operation of moving and renaming. This is how we do it. First, as we did for the Czechia files, we grab only those folders that include the railways in their name. But in the second step, when we want to unzip, rather than unzipping into the existing folder where all these files are, we're going to unzip them into this clone uh, folder so that we avoid overwriting. And also we're going to specify that we do not want to overwrite. The next step, we create a sample of numbers. These numbers will be the length of the zip files that we have, so 18, but they're going to be random. So every time they're going to be different. Now, we also will have the old files, so those are that already exist once we unzip them. But there are also new files, so new files will be, uh, in terms of the name, combination of the sample number, random number, and the file old name. And then we also do the file rename here, and once we do that in a for loop, we, uh, at the end of this process, we then remove this vector's file old, file new. We navigate back to that Spain clone directory and then we enlist the files that we just unzipped and renamed 
and you can first thing notice that we have 90 files here. So since every shape file is approximately always uh, consists of five files times 18, this would be exactly that. So we got it. Now, the next thing you will also notice is that uh, these names are weird exactly because we appended at every uh, for loop uh, step, we appended with the random number. So we get pretty ugly uh, names here and we cannot really connect them back to region level, but uh, it does do the trick and we don't really care much about that part because we want actually all these shape files to just uh, load now and put together into one uh, Spanish Railways file. Now, in order to get the Spanish Railways as a single file, we first need to load all those regional files and then merge them into one. We do that by first enlisting the files from that uh, Spain clones uh, folder and we only take those that have SHP pattern meaning the shape files. Next thing is we apply the stread function to every member of this list. And then in order to merge everything together, we need to apply the do call, which executes this stread function and binds them together uh, into a single file, which we call Spain Railway SF. We just quickly inspect uh, this newly built file and uh, again, as in the case of Czechia, it's a line string. It has uh, 10 columns and uh, it has, of course, the geometry field, which indicates that this is a shape file in the form of a, a SF data frame. And uh, of course, it has the third column, which for us is the most important one, F class, where we will filter out everything else but rail and narrow gauge. All right, apart from inspecting that shape file, let's also make sure that we loaded the Spanish railways. And we are going to do that by plotting our railways object against the Spanish national boundaries. So we first utilize the Gisco get countries function from the Gisco R package and we specify ES, which is the ISO 2 code for Spain in the country argument in order to get Spanish a national boundary shape file. And once we have that, we call to rescue ggplot2. We first plot the part which is the national boundaries in light blue, a bit thinner, and of course transparent so that we can see the railways inside of the boundaries. And the next uh, argument uh, in this one, we specify the Spanish railways. But as we did for the Czechia map, we only include the rails and narrow gauge using the base R function in and then filtering the F class column. The railways uh, will appear in the pink and they will be a bit thicker than national boundaries. And looks like we got it right, folks. We see the pink colored railways of Spain within the light blue national boundaries of Spain Next thing, I will show you how you can make this map even prettier using ggplot2. All right, it's time to take ggplot2 and uh, create a beautiful map of Spanish railways. We start off by calling ggplot's arguments uh, and then we define two geomsf arguments as we did before. Uh, first, we will plot the Spanish national boundaries in a light blue. And uh, we will make uh, the territory itself transparent so that inside of it we can see our railways. We're going to make it quite thinner this time so that uh, the national boundaries do not occupy our attention. Of course, you're free to play here with the color size or any other parameter. Next one uh, within the GMSF we will again subset the Spanish railways. The reason why I do that instead of creating a new object is that maybe you want to include everything else and then it's gonna be quite easy. So you just need to remove the subset and everything from comma onward to F class in, etc. So I'm just leaving that as an option for you. Maybe you want also to uh, have other types of rails from the OSM database. Uh, then the railways will be in uh, yellow this time. I opted for this one because it provides a very nice contrast to blue. And as you can see, it is a bit thicker. It's 0.15. 
then we will define tiles and uh, captions in the next one this one is totally optional but it would be quite good if you're using OpenStreetMap data to also include that uh, data comes from OpenStreetMap contributors if you go to the OSM website you will see that this is the recommended citation if you're using their product and last but not least we're gonna define the background of our plot in this tutorial we will first define the minimal theme and then get rid of any access lines or text that we don't want to use also we will omit the legend since we don't really show any quantity here uh, and to do that you just use the none argument the none value here for the legend next thing our background is gonna be navy blue uh, which is going to be complementary to the light blue color of the borders and contrasting to the yellow um, color of the railways we will also then uh, define this navy blue here for the major grids and down below we will also define for the plot background itself but before we do that we also want to define the two types of text that we're going to be using title and caption uh, the title is going to be a bit bigger and here I also use the, the bold uh, fonts uh, you can also opt to omit this one just wanted to kind of accentuate a bit the color will be gray 90 uh, and it will be uh, middle justified but you can again here customize as you see fit for the caption it will be uh, smaller than the title same color so something leaning towards white and it will also be uh, justified for margins I remove any excess margins by just setting everything to uh, zeros um, and uh, as I said before the navy blue will be the default uh, background color in this case so for the plot panel and the legend background we will use the navy blue color before I show you the final map I quickly wanted to share uh, my uh, ggplot saving options so the way you work with ggplot is you need to use the ggsave function to save your object and within that uh, function you specify the file name and the extension i usually save as a png uh, file uh, and then you can also specify the width and the height funny enough i come from a metric system but i am used to using inches in ggplot too so what you can see here I'm trying to save in inches and because the plot is going to be a bit taller I assign a bit more value to the height if you're not comfortable using inches you can also specify the argument unit equals two and then you can do centimeters or pixels for example and uh, the resolution I opt for is 600 and here it is the Spanish Railways map done in ggplot2 as you can see we uh, have the light blue national boundaries which are a bit thinner than the railways uh, in yellow and then the nice navy blue background which acts as a pretty good contrasting background against the railways and complementary uh, to these borders of course you can uh, here play maybe a bit with these options choose different colors and positions if you want even cut off these uh, nice islands over there so that you get a better focus on the Spanish railways and uh, of course you can also customize the size either of the national boundaries or of the railways and that's all for today folks in today's tutorial we covered quite a bit from data wrangling to data visualization most importantly you learn how you can easily access the rich OpenStreetMap database with R. And along that way, you learn two methods which allow you to download the data for any country in the world. Now, you also learn how you can easily unzip files with the same name without necessarily overwriting them. And finally, you created a very pretty map, a railway map of Spain. Now, I'm really looking forward to your own use cases and how you can export this tutorial to other geographic realms. But do not stop there. As you can see from the OpenStreetMap database, there are other very interesting geospatial objects, such as, for example, traffic, roads, places, 
points of interest, waterways. So the space is very broad. It's just up to you how you can use it. Now, if you would specifically like to just create a railway map of other country, feel free to check my GitHub repo just below and feel free to modify it, to copy it, to fit it to your own purpose as you see fit. On your journey through geospatial analysis with R, perhaps I can also be of help to you. So check some of my previous tutorials that I did. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to reach out to me here on YouTube, but also on Instagram and Twitter. See you next time.